Hey Kingdom family, this is Brother John just tuning in with you all today. Uh, today is um, Saturday, uh, January the 6th. It's about 8.45 p.m. late in the evening. Um, I'm just coming before you. I've been meaning to come, but of course I don't be thinking sometimes between the 1st and the 5th of every month. Uh, this majority of the time I'm kind of busy and then you know how that is. You're busy, you're doing, you got to make provision, you got to take care of the bills that you have in your home. Well, of course, those are the busiest times of the season for me. But it, nevertheless, I am here. Um, I just wanted to touch bases. Um, this is going to be quick. It's going to be brief. Uh, before I get started, I want to just let someone know uh, that may hear this message. As I'm not going to go into too much debt with it, um, but dealing with that area that is not a judgmental. Um, word maybe nothing that's going to try to condemn you it's something to make you think and try to open your ears that you're, and hopefully the Lord will open your ears and, 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 and deal with your heart uh, dealing with certain things that, that that's taking place within your life I don't, I don't know what you're going, going through. I can't tell you what's going through, but there are things that I do hear. When I say hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I hear there are uh, things that's taking place. Uh, there's nothing new up under the sun. I'm, I'm going to share some things here in the text of the Word of God. Uh, just dealing with Genesis. I told you before I'm going to be sticking with Genesis for a while, and I'm going to just stay brief. Uh, I'm going to deal a little bit, just dealing with Adam. Uh, then I'm going to go to possibly Noah. And then I'm done. But dealing with that, I just want to bring something forth. Something forth that makes someone think about it. But it's, it's nothing that makes somebody feel condemned. If anything, I pray that it will bring forth a change. It will bring forth a change in your life. Uh, it's a blessing. It's for the body of Christ. But my whole thing is dealing with that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a separation. It's a difference between the church in the kingdom, the church ways of doing things and the kingdom's ways of doing things. And some of the things I've mentioned, uh, I, I will probably touch bases back on it. But if you get a chance, those who might be tuning into this video, go back to the previous videos uh, that are before this one. One of them is uh, dealing with abandonment. And it's talking about God's grace and his promises. And this is just certain things that many things that people deal with. Sometimes people feel defeated downtrodden some people feel depressed they feel like they will never have another chance they think god uh is not there when god is long suffering and yet it's the same sense he is presently there with them and then there are some people who just feel like that god has forgotten about them and he hasn't so i'm just trying to be here to encourage but yet sometimes if if it was to expose some of the things of the devil's lies that he's been putting out there because sometimes there are messages that we hear in church we hear around people uh, maybe just going throughout our days dealing with the world that we don't think about certain things when I'm dealing with believers the ones who believe in Jesus Christ and that actually have made him their Lord and Savior that there is much more how in tune we need to be we we need to be when I say that uh, how many of you many times allow the enemy to come in like a flood how many times have you allowed the enemy? How many times will you allow the enemy to come in like a flood? When you should be raising a standard. When you should be raising a standard, whether that's a prayer life, getting in that secret place, whether it's to the point of fasting. We in the new season, if, if you want to say, I don't get along with a lot of the holidays and stuff take place. Uh, I try to meet people where they're at. I'm, no, I'm not up here that I can't meet people uh, down here, I'm nowhere. I meet you in between. It's just I just ask people to have an ear to hear, and dealing with it, ever let the spirit have an opportunity to to speak through earthly vessels, through men, women, sons and daughters of God. Well, dealing with that, ever we get to that place where you know uh, I talk about that later in some other videos. And people probably wonder why. I didn't talk about certain holidays that took place. Months that went by, I might not have shared, uh, I came forth to, to talk about it. I'm, I don't care to continue to talk about some things that has been talked about from generations to generations, from year to year. And I'm just saying this to the church. The world can do what they're going to do and how they're going to be, but yet at the same sense, if we ain't shining our light, they're not going to change their ways. 
they're not going to uh, come to the Lord because at the same sense, it's like the world has seemed like they have much more ideas, influences, uh, things, activities that the body of Christ choose to come and agree with and, and, and actually participate with. Whether if it's, if you want to say Halloween and Thanksgiving and, and Easter's and different and so forth. And some of us, we have to outgrow certain things. I, I understand that. Uh, many people understand that because some of these things are is a process. Some of these things is a process. No different if someone becomes a new bride uh, and, and a, a husband. It's a process where they have to develop and grow in marriage because they've been used to being single. So they have to grow into one, become one in marriage, but it is a process. So dealing with that area, but I just haven't talked about things because I have talked about many things and sometimes it's not just waste your time because it's not, it's not, it's not just, it's just a waste of your time. And sometimes there are standards. There are commandments. When I say commandments, there are some things that the Lord has shared with me that he's commanding me to do. And there's some things he's commanded many of you to do, but many of us uh, don't take heed. Uh, we might hear something and then we choose not to be obedient. You know, I think in the book of Proverbs and, you know, it talks about certain things. But do you all not know that poverty and shame comes to those who don't follow instruction? Many of us are up under the shame of our mother and our father. Parents. When we thought we had certain coverings, but some of our coverings were shameful from their choices. And I'm touching base. It's kind of like Adam and Eve. They tried to cover themselves out of not being obedient to what God had required for them. I'm just using him as an example. And we can find out this thing too. Even though we have grace and mercy with Jesus Christ, who was full of grace, there's still sometimes a shame that is there. Because sometimes we want to cover ourselves the way we want to cover and we don't want to put the covering of Jesus Christ on our life. Only when we messed up, we want to put the blood that covers us. But many other times we are out there up under the sheets, if you know what I mean. Many of us, of us are out there between the sheets, thinking you're covered in a defiled bed, but yet in, in God's eyes, you're uncovered. I've been there, done that. You're uncovered. But the thing about it is what's happening. Sin is about on it even more. We are making choices. And there are, the, the enemy is coming in like a flood. And no one is taking heed to the standards that need to be raised. You can look all across around this world but and see how the standards, the standards that has been lowered are affecting each and every last one of us. Especially those who are not in Christ. In the kingdom of God, there are standards. There are standards where the enemy cannot prevail against the true church. If the enemy is prevailing against you in certain areas of your life, you might have to, and you think he is, if you feel depressed and very heavy and burdensome with certain things, I don't think that is God. That is the works of darkness. And that might be something that you are doing because if you're putting yourself in a position where you're thinking that, you know, that you feel like the enemy has got the upper hand on you as a believer. I'm saying as a believer, uh, there might be something wrong with your walk with the Lord. That's for you to examine. There might be you're lacking prayer. You might be walking in a, a place where you're thinking it's about you. And just you alone when it's not about you. You might think it is about your positions and sometimes our titles in the body of Christ. Whether you're a pastor, whether if you're just a member of the body of Christ. You might just say, hey, I'm a son. I'm a daughter. And, 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 and this is the thing where it comes to a point where the rubber meets the road. Then you need to act like it. You need to start carrying yourself that way. You, you, we need to, as the body of believers, start caring ourselves where we're not acting like the world. I'm going to move on a, a real quick on some areas, but have you raised a standard? Have you walked with the Lord and yet you know his voice? Have he given you certain commandments and yet you did not follow? 
Well, I'm gonna show you certain ones that walked through the the word of God, that that knew His voice, knew what He commanded, but yet they still desire some things of the world. There are people who are still to this day choosing when they feel like life is prevailing against them, or the gates of hell are prevailing against them. They choose to to participate in things that's of the world. They they want to walk it out. They, they want to walk it out. And if you understand this is something is of the world that is taking place is in the body of Christ. I'm not going to bring certain names, but I'm talking about you're supposed to be walking by faith, but you're walking with the world. Sh that's, that's shameful. That is shameful. And many times we're thinking, why do I feel the way I, I do? Sometimes the church itself, hear me out there, leaders. Hear me out, brothers and sisters. Sometimes the church... We bring shame upon ourselves because we don't know how to follow instructions. And some of you, if you don't feel shameful for some of the decisions that you're doing, how you're leading the sheep, or let's say sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, just even how we carry in ourselves, you're full of pride. You are full of pride. I'm not talking about you walking around here like just Sadducees, Pharisees, or scribes, or somebody who think they got it all together. I'm saying when you're walking to as a, a, a son and a daughter who's humble, who has placed on humility, who is choosing to put their old life away and be earnestly seeking after the things of God, the newness of him, following the example, being the example like their Lord and their Savior, Jesus Christ. If we're going to call him Father, why not act like him? Do the things that he would do. Or are we living a lie? Following the Father of lies. And he's been doing it from the beginning. There's more to say, as I've always said, there's more to say, but like I said, I'm going to keep this brief. I'm going to move on. Um, if you can... At times, uh, let's go. I want to just kind of, it's just to kind of make you talk. I might be jumping around a little bit, but touch bases on those two previous videos that I have made uh, dealing with abandonment. And uh, I hope for some who have looked at it, share it, send it to different ministries brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, to your relatives, any of those videos, any of those videos that I have made within the past two to three years, they are irrelevant. They're relevant for the times that we're living in today. You know, uh, there's nothing new up under the sun. And some of this stuff that I'm going to read is just like as if it was today. You know, they, that, that Jesus said when his return comes, one of his returns when he comes, they're going to still be doing the same thing they was doing in Noah's day. People want to know when he's going to come. And then they think he's not coming, but you see the signs all around you. But I'm not sit there. I don't want to sit there and be like other people and telling you, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. We don't know the time or the day or the hour that he's going to come. But he tells us, he gives us signs. There are signs out there. And people are still going to be married, giving in marriage. People are going to still be partying, doing whatever they're doing. You're going to even have... Preachers that's supposed to be wise stewards that is over the flock. They're going to say he ain't came yet and they're going to start acting a fool. Preachers acting a fool. Those who are his disciples acting a fool. Those who are supposed to be representing saying, well, we're going to continue to do what we're going to do. We're going to be like Moses when he went to the, to the mountain to get the commandments. They would sit down there and they were sitting over there having orgies. Building other gods and images and lifting up something to, to represent God. Many people in the church today, I'm going to say this, many people in the body of Christ today are actually lifting men or women up. Because they have had a celebrity status. Maybe because they sung music and whatever not and they're lifting people up. And, and I shared this in my last video, whether, you know, People are making souls out of people. They want someone to rule over them versus the king of king and the lord of lords. But I'm going to go forth, go on here and stuff. But this is the things that's taken off in the body of Christ. And do you know it's a shameful, shameful thing? Poverty and shame follow those who don't follow instructions. We've had leaders that don't follow instructions. 
There's mothers and fathers that's supposed to be uh, good stewards over their children, are not following instructions, not giving them godly instructions. They got one foot in the world and one foot in the church, because I'm not going to say in the kingdom, because the kingdom is going to really deal, the kingdom is really going to continue to advance and deal with anything that's impure. The kingdom doesn't play representations of the kingdom. Jesus represented the kingdom. John the Baptist represented the kingdom. There's many that came to represent the kingdom. And it's not sitting up there saying somebody is serious, religious, or so holy than thou or better than anybody else. That's not the case. Is that we're giving honor due to who is due. And nothing else matters. We're giving honor to the one that it is due, the honor and the praise. And we know that we was formed in his image and after his likeness. It's him being father over us that we're here to give him glory. And everything else doesn't matter. Only giving Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the glory is the only thing that matters. Nothing, 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 nothing else matters in the kingdom of God. I'm going to move on. Just share some things just for you to just kind of pick and think about. Uh, if I go to um, how I would start, I do not know, uh, Genesis. But as I said, dealing with that, I will share about a lot of things. I have shared about many things uh, I could have talked about, even to Christmas, New Year's, and things to come, holidays that people get into. These are some standards that people just lift up these, these holidays if there's something great. There's nothing powerful so much about these days that you cannot do each and every day of your life. But you can break bread. You can give thanks. You can sow into somebody's life. When I say sow, I'm saying give. Give someone a gift. You can bless someone at any time because God has blessed you. You know, you have freely received something. Freely give. There's, there's, you don't have to act uh, uh, on Resurrection Sunday, as many do, as if it's Easter, where we want to go hunt. Many of us shouldn't be hunting after some Easter eggs on Easter when we should be hunting and seeking the Lord, chasing Him down so we can find Him. Many of you are lost because you're seeking some of this stuff that's in this world. The enemy has poured in and came in like a flood. We're supposed to be emptying ourselves. To allow God to pour his presence and his dwelling within us. That he can abide in us and we can abide in him. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Chapter 2, real quick. Uh, verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of good, of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. While we continuously still eating of the tree of good and evil, many of you all know the difference between good and evil. You should be teaching your children the difference between good and evil. Why is no one embracing, if we was to say, the tree of life? Uh, if we looked at it more in our, our human form, Jesus Christ. Why are we not chasing after him? Because he said, I come to give life, life more than abundantly. He didn't come to give us evil. He didn't come to uh, bring sorrow to it. Because whatever the enemy gives us that is good, he adds no sorrow to it. So someone is mimicking someone. Someone is lying somewhere. Someone is receiving and eating of a fruit that has been offered to them by Satan. Why do we keep embracing and filling ourselves with a bunch of mess when it, our Lord has told us not to eat? We, we got knowledge now, but why are we eating of things that are doing us no good? Something you can think about. They found out, if I go to chapter 2, verse 24, uh, let's say verse 25, and you can read on, just read all this stuff. It, it'll be a blessing. And they were both naked. And the man and his wife were not ashamed. 
they were both naked. If I could sit there and say 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 25, and they were both naked, and they was not ashamed. How is it that now uh, you have believers who are supposed to be up under the blood walking around in shame? Why can't you be free and joyful and content and at peace in who you are in Christ? That has to be let you know that for some something that you're doing, you're covering yourself in your own covering. You're making choices that you're covering. And after you make certain choices, you're covering yourself with that defiled bed. Whether if it's that you're covering yourself up because you got to cover. If you're doing something, let's say if you're telling a lie, you got to cover yourself by telling a lie. And then you got to cover yourself by covering another lie. Because you're trying to cover yourself. You're covering yourself. And these are things that you are not do. You should put away the old man. You need to be focusing on the new creature in Christ Jesus. Telling the truth. How much more peace and comfort is there when you tell the truth? How much do you think God loves you even, even more for your obedience? For your obedience. Just, just to be obedient. How have your consciousness now persuaded you to say what is good is evil and evil is good? That's not just for even the body of Christ. That could be just for someone who's from out in the world. But I'm going to move right on along. How can your consciousness that knows good and evil, your mind be warped unless God have changed it to a reprobate? He seared your mind to make yourself you and whoever else an example of. He might be making us examples for you to help you. And he might be making you examples to help us not to want to go down that road because he brought us. We once ourselves were liars. We once ourselves were fornicators. We once ourselves was thieves and, and we was gluttons in ourselves. We was doing certain things like that. We're not no better than you. We just come to a point that we allow what we have heard to manifest itself throughout our life. He had begun a good work and still working with us. But there's many of us that still that's choosing to stay in darkness. Choosing to stay in darkness. I'm going to move on. Uh, let's go to chapter 3, verse 6. Read all of it. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise. She took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Here, once you give your life to the Lord and you believe on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there's a, should be like a, born again experience you can lay that naked as a child and allow him to take care of you but many of you forget many of you have not even been taught even by those that are supposed to be shepherds over you for him to tend the lambs take care of them tend to the sheep and many of you are actually now to the point where you haven't been taught where there might be class to tell you the truth about certain things, what things you should not be desiring, to warn you of what some of the tactics of the enemy and how he is going to try to persuade you. Many of you are going to have to get to the point that you're going to have to be accountable. There is going to be accountability that you're going to need to have. And I'm going to move on. Many of you are going to need accountability to move on dealing with life. Because many of us are going to sit there and always say, the devil made me do it. That the devil made me do it. Well, this looked like this woman had a desire of the tree. The enemy ain't doing nothing but tempt her, persuade her, maybe just influence her. But he did not take her hand to touch that fruit. She put it in her own mouth. He didn't force it down her mouth. No one is forcing none, none of you all to live with somebody who's not your husband or your wife. No one is forcing you to go steal for something 
that belongs to someone else. No one is forcing you to try to be like someone else unless you have the desire to be like someone else and your desire should be to be like Jesus, to be in Christ, to be a disciple, to be a son and a daughter of God. There's more to say. I'm just going to continue to move on. But the thing is, now her eyes became open. How many of you are out there now know that you are out there naked? You think a certain way now. When you left, supposed to have been coming out the world, you still think worse than what you was when you was in the world. And you're supposed to be a believer. How many of you are naked now and then you just try to cover yourself to say that you're a Christian? And I'm not being the type of person that's just saying, like, if I'm persecuting the church or attacking Christians. But no, you examine yourself. As I shared in my previous videos, what is a Christian? Are you covering yourself? Are you giving excuses? Are you giving so many excuses that you're hiding behind Jesus? When Jesus is trying to put you out in the forefront that you can yet represent his glory where your light is shining, but yet he can't bring you from hiding behind his blood? Because that's just, that's always your escape. You use Jesus as an escape goat. That's a shame. I think it talks about that in the book of Hebrews. How it's like, it's a shame because it's like kind of crucifying Jesus Christ all over and over and over again. You represent Christ and you're bringing shame to his name over and over and over again, when we're supposed to be walking by faith, away from this, this corrupted world, many people, if you want to say, just joined in, as you hear sometimes in these, these sanctuaries, these churches that are ran by men and not by Christ, and they want to say they have an assignment, a different type of assignment, they just want to, uh, they want to walk it out. They just want to walk it out and do whatever they want to do. They want the east side to walk it out, the north side to walk it out, the west side to walk it out, the south side to walk it out. You get my drift. But someone needs to repent. Someone needs to come to the knowledge of the truth. And you have been having people preaching for years. And yet they want to wait till they get some of these young brothers Leaders out there want to wait till they get older to act a fool, to be foolish. My prayer is that you will turn from your wicked ways. You will uh, come to back to your understanding that you will get off that, that, that road, that path that you've been on. That there won't be some type of influence that the enemy or him using people are leading you when you're supposed to be leading them. I say chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard the sound. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? And I'm going to just move from here. There are many things that the Lord has told us consciously. Because we have, many of us have eaten things that is evil. And then there's some things God has brought in our life to show us what is good. What portion are you eating of the most? Because consciously, you know, many of us know, I'm, even if I just say adults, I'm not going to say lambs, but sheep, those that have rule over them. We know the difference between good and evil. Because the Lord has showed his goodness, his loving kindness, his mercy. He even gave us commandments of certain things to continually keep us out of harm's way. 
just something for many of us to think about. I'm going to flip on through. Y'all can keep reason, reading that. But, um, you know, of course, God, you know, cursed him in a sense. Well, he, he let me put it this way. I don't look at it as God cursing him. He brought reproof. He rebuked him. He brought reproof. And he brought some type of correction, some type of order because of their decisions. It's a shame for you to give your life to the Lord and you just keep allowing the enemy to have a heyday with you. That you continue to be up under his, his mastership, his, his rulership. That when you're supposed to be represented as a child of light, you blend in with the children of darkness. Those that are children of light, and you know that you represent light, and your heart is for the Lord, you all just keep shining your light. We care less about the accusations. We will overcome definitely by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony that we're more than conquerors, that we're uh, light bearers and carriers. That we, we are peacemakers, but yet it says this, that we would carry ourselves as people who have peace that pass all understanding. We have not obtained all knowledge. We are not that perfect. But yet it says this, but we fight whatever you can do. We know that we resist the devil and that we shun evil. And then we will continue to fight a good fight of faith for the things of the kingdom. Because sometimes it seems like some people that is in the church have threw in the flag. That is a shame. Because the church, with the victory banner of Jesus, they don't want to talk about Jesus that much in the church no more. When it talks about the cross, it doesn't talk about the cross. We talk about what Jesus did on the cross, but we don't want to talk about what we are supposed to do and be doing on the, with our cross. But yet we want to speak the name of Jesus to devils and unclean spirits. How effective have you been to those spirits? How much have you made the kingdom advance over the kingdom of darkness? How many times will you be a voice to speak up when the world and darkness is speaking back at you. And you just be quiet. You know, as you go back in chapter 3, you know, 22, chapter 3, verse 22, it says, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like us like one of us, to know good and evil. Many of you know good and evil, but you cover yourself with evil. Some of you lie in your bed in evil and wake up with evil. You don't have to do that. Give good a chance. Give light a chance. Give God more opportunities with your life. This is not something to make someone feel bad. Yes, you messed up. Many of us have messed up. I will go along right with many of you to put myself in the category, whether I do your acts or not. But I'm just saying we because we are a body. But it's going to come to a point where God is going to separate us. The sheep from the goats. He's going to prune us to the point you're going to be looking off and then you're going to say, hey, give me some of that oil. Because I wonder how many of you have prepared yourself to be ready of that great day. Whether even if you go to sleep, are you ready? Driving down the road now, you don't know if you'll make it home going in the grocery store. Whether if you're going to make it home when you went to just to get some food, you experience something totally different. A true awakening in the presence of Jesus Christ. Many of us so Focus and so woke in this world when someone is trying to wake you up that they let you know Jesus is coming for you. He is coming back for his church. Are you ready? Are you taking heed? Because we're going to hear about how Noah did that. Noah was preparing the way. They had hundreds of years to get prepared. 
And the only people that went into the, Noah's boat, the ark, was Noah and his family. Noah and his family and two things of every kind. Things that were clean and those things that were unclean. I'm talking about creeping, crawling things as well as animals. Anything that had the breath of life. But it said, the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. You don't have an excuse. You better know it's evil if you're going out there and you're partying and using those, those, the music that's out there in the world to party with them that's out in the world. When we got people who's in the body of Christ, when we have music for a celebration of the one who created that great day, if you're going to celebrate those days, then put it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus could come and he said no one could come unless the Spirit of God draw him. If you come any other way, that is evil and that is wicked. People use it so many different tactics to drive. We are supposed to compel people to come to Christ, but what we offer them is Christ. We don't give them the world. We don't compromise with them. We stand ten toes down. No great of the mass of people, there's still just a few that went out there to turn the world upside down. When you read the book of Acts, it's not just talking about the Acts. I'm talking about individuals. There are individuals out there that can one person, just one person, can start turning the world upside down. If a president can make a difference in the world. If a king can make a difference in the world. How much can someone that's in the kingdom of God, just one person, make the difference? But many of us want to bow down, bend over, accept certain things, contaminate the things of the kingdom. The kingdom of darkness have their own kingdom. Why do we want to bring that darkness into the kingdom of light? Kingdom of darkness have their own church. They know who they represent. Why do we yield? And I understand we got to make a different example. We have to present ourselves differently. But that's not what's taking place. There's a lot of deception that is flowing through the body of Christ. The enemy has already crept in. If God, if it wasn't so true, God would not even have written it in his word, even in the book of Revelation dealing with the churches. The churches. He talked about the churches, but he did not say anything about the kingdom. We got to go higher, y'all, in Christ, in his way of thinking, by allowing the mind of Christ to be in us. Moving right along. Let's go to chapter six, and I'm going uh, to try to get on off here. Chapter six. There came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters was born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all who they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit, and I shared this in my other videos, my spirit, says the Lord, shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Verse 5, then the Lord saw the weakness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent and thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That the only, every, 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 that's what, this is what the word says, every. There's nothing new up under the sun, brothers and sisters, nothing new. That every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, let's just move the world out the way. Because... If I was to go back to the New Testament, Jesus, before he left, thank you, Holy Spirit, he prayed for his disciples in the book of John. And he did not pray for the world. He prayed for the ones he chose. And one of the things he prayed for them, he said, I've given them everything. 
I've cleansed them, I've sanctified them. I'm just paraphrasing. And then he told them, he prayed that he would keep them protected from the evil one. That means as much as he can, God can do to protect them from the evil one, that they can be pure and sincere, committed, committed, faithful. They, that they won't swerve to the left, to the right. God will do as much as he can, but we know that we do have free will. But what I'm trying to say is get at is that Jesus did pray for the world. So why are we making decisions as the body of Christ to do things that are evil? I'm just trying to be our help. Why do you do things as evil? We know there's some things in the flesh. Jesus talked about certain things in the flesh. But here we are. Many people don't believe in the Holy Spirit, but many have the Holy Spirit. And they're not yielding to the things of the Holy Spirit. And if you, as I shared many times before, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, the word of God is spirit. And it is true. If you would allow this word to become, like David said, and put it in your heart that you might not sin against him, all it is is getting it in your heart and making a sound decision of, of a choice. Because it boils down to it that the enemy can't make you make a choice. And God is not going to force you to make a choice. But I do understand that the Lord does, as the enemy tempts you not to make a choice, God just comes in and he just come and give you straightforward the best choice to make. Choose life. Choose life. Choose what comes with life. Don't choose what comes with death. Choose what comes with life. Jesus said, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. I can go on all day with that, but I got to move on. But their very intent of their heart was only evil continually. That's chapter 6, verse 5. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, birds of the air, and for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I talked about grace in my last videos. Let me ask you a question. How many of you all know that you woke up this morning? God's unmerited grace. To allow you to have another chance, another opportunity. Some of you would take grace and fulfill your days and don't realize it was a gift from the Lord. Believers, Jesus was full of grace. He's so merciful and yet he's empowering you. Grace comes with some type of power too. It keeps, it actually sustains you. It's, it's substance. You woke up with a different type of substance than what the world wake up. The world, he showed his goodness, his love and kindness. We get the love and kindness, but we get much more through Jesus Christ. How many of you found grace? If you made him your Lord and Savior, you found grace. But now we get ready to go deal with Noah. But how many of you found grace? But how many of you are, are pleasing God? Not your girlfriend, not your boyfriend, not your mom, not your daddy, not the industry you're working in, not the jobs. I'm talking about first and foremost, you're pleasing God. There are certain things that God has done. When I read about Noah, God even made a covenant. How many of you all have made a covenant with your Lord and Savior. I'm not talking about making promises and vows like men do. I'm talking about you have a covenant because you know you know how to pre present something to the Lord and with that covenant to even ask him to help you keep that covenant. Don't just make a covenant. Ask the Lord to help you because we'll fall short. We, we sometimes not as faithful. But then you'll find some people who's one-sided. They just want the Lord to do his part, and they don't want to do theirs. There is a part that is required out of us as children. I raised my children. I raised sons that I didn't have. It's not my seed. But yet, at the same sense, I have a responsibility due to my wife, due to my kids, due for what God has given me, even stewardship over my home, uh, the vehicles he blessed me with over my job, my business, over people's lives that he has to work with me. I have accountability. 
And I would not be able to do, just like Jesus has said, without God, I could do nothing. I would not be able to do anything because I realize I have to rely on him, but I will ask him for help because I realize I cannot do it in my own pipe, in my own might or in my own type of power. I need him. So if I establish something with the Lord, I'm because he's faithful. I'm going to ask him, just give me some of his faithfulness. And then I realize when he break me off some of his faithfulness, because he's been so good and committed to me, how will I turn my back on him? I'm going to bear one of the fruit of the spirits, which is faithfulness. It's a process, but I'm going to bear one of the fruit of the spirits is faithfulness. When a God has been so good to me, how can I just be disobedient? When he's giving me peace that pass all the time. Oh now, uh, he's done broke me off of peace. Then dealing with that error, I'm going to be peaceful in him. I'm not going to give the world my peace to take from me. I'm not going to give the devil something to rob me of. I'm going to take, if, if, if I even give him a little bit, I'm going to take it back. Regardless of who he might use, I'm going to, my children is not going to take my peace. My wife is not going to take my peace. Ain't a man or woman alive is going to take my peace. If you do, I'm coming for you. I'm coming to take back what the devil has stole from me. Because I have a covenant with my Lord and Savior. And I asked him to help me. And he is faithful. Even if I backslide. Even if you backslide, brothers and sisters, he said he's still married to the backslider. But some of us are just going to continue to slip, slide on over to the other temple. The satanic temple. To the defiled bed. To the partying. To the behavior. And you know who I'm talking about. Sometimes his name ain't even worth speaking. But I'm going to go back to 6. Chapter 6. Verse 9. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Question. Perfect don't mean you perfect. Perfect don't mean you dot every eye across every T. But yet you have favor. God is pleased. I, I would just say he is pleased with you. Verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was, was filled with violence. I did a video about a year ago that the earth is filled with violence. About a year ago. And all you see is violence. Some people say, you have to be careful what you say. No, there are certain things sometimes God is trying to warn you. Because sometimes many of us in the world, like we say, we take on slang words. Pronoun words that don't mean a hill of beans now. Woke, I still haven't came to the point of what is woke in the world. But I know one thing, we need to be awoke to the things of the kingdom. We need to be awoke to the things of the kingdom. My eyes are blind to the things of the world. I can care less the things of the world. Because as long as I'm shining light, they might have to close their eyes because that light is too great for them. Their, 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 their wickedness and their darkness it says light has come into the world and they would not come to that light because their deeds would be exposed so let me be awake and shine a little light on somebody who might say they are awoke or to a world even to a world of believers so called believers that say they are awoke let me see your deeds said the Lord let me see the corners, the little things that you are doing. Let me see the dark crevices of your mind as well as your heart. Let me see with who your soul yearns for. The earth also was corrupted in, in uh, corrupt before God. Chapter 6, verse 11. And the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth. And indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. 
I'm going to move on. Jesus told us there's a struggle between the flesh and the spirit. I'm not going to go too deep, too far, too far with that. Many of you need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you, even on a personal note. And start making choices. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to give you a boost. I ain't telling you what to do. I'm not trying to control no one. I'm not trying to be here like some type of narcissist. That's some type of word. I don't know what it is. Don't care for what it is. But I'm not trying to be here to give somebody control. I'm trying to push you into who you are supposed to be. And you're supposed to be seeking the things of the spirit. Because the father seeketh those. Who will worship him in spirit and in truth. He's already not told us in his word that your flesh ain't going to profit you anything. That's why many of us in the body of Christ don't have no standard. Because they're walking in the flesh. They get You're not getting nowhere in the flesh. Many of you are out there. Even if I, if I was to say YouTube, as I said before, are full of drama. You keep drama going on. You're full of the flesh. You're toxic. You got a lot of sisters that's in the bite of crisis out here. Some of you are toxic. Some of your friends are toxic. That's why many of you are toxic. Some of you brothers too are toxic. Many of the brothers is not out here teaching the word because they're in the flesh. They haven't surrendered. And that could go for Either or, male or female. But when I go on, since that just slipped out of my mouth, when you read about Noah, and it talks about the great flood, let's go on to um, chapter 6. Verse 18. Keep reading it, but I'm going to read the whole chapters. But I'm going to stop chapter 6, verse 18. But I will establish my covenant with you. God said he would establish the covenant. He never told you you would establish the covenant. That's why I said you ask the Lord. But some of you make a covenant. You think you can do it in your own power, your own might. And God said, no, none of this good stuff only can happen but by my spirit. You can't. God is the only one to bring increase. He can bring someone to sow a seed, to water a seed. Matter of fact, you can sow the seed in your own life and you can ward and meditate on it, but it's still going to be him who brings the increase. You, you can't do nothing without him. God is not going to let no man out glorify him. But I will establish my covenant with you, says the Lord, and you shall go into the ark. You, your sons, your wife, and your son's wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. You shall be... They shall be male and female. Some of you all know where I can go with, with this. Adam and Eve, God took a woman out of Adam. Took a real and made a woman. And what they were supposed to do is to multiply across the land. How have we got to a point where there are so many lies? And then some people might come in and try to change the world of, word of God and hope a generation die out to whatever they try to teach the generations coming up. Uh, that, that's nothing but the enemy. But I tell you all, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, if you're participating with a woke world, then you're still asleep. That's how why Jesus had to go through what he had to go through because his disciples were caught sleeping. Darkness had its time and its place. It was time, a time of darkness. When you read uh, at the time when he was in Gethsemane, it was a time of darkness. And many of you are wonder why we have a dark world around us. Because many of you are sleeping. Teach your children. Teach them to pray. Tell them the truth. Don't let the world teach them. You as a body of believers, tell them the truth. If you're saying you're a shepherd of God leading the flock, are you telling the sheep that they are wolves? Or are you telling them that they are sheep? Are you allowing the goats to think they are sheep? Because of monetary reasons? You're afraid you're going to hurt somebody's feelings? It's not, it's the way, and that is a way that you can go about teaching someone. But first of all, you got to tell someone. 
And what you have to tell someone is the truth. You can just lay it out point blank. Tell the truth. The sky is blue. Those plants are green. What's wrong with that? Who's going to debate it and why would someone debate it? But sometimes we find out, see, like it's a lie. It's a whole lot easier. And a lie ain't making it easy. It don't look easy out here now from all the lies that have been taking place. It don't look easy at all. Keep them alive, male and female. For the birds of their kind, animals after that kind, and of every creeper thing of the earth after its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive, and they shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. And Noah, 22, this is obedience. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. He, he did to all that God commanded him, and he did it. You mean to tell me, many of y'all brothers and sisters out there, God has not told you something and that you are sticking to it? Because there should be a lot of much more, much more light in the body of Christ. Anything that's saying is part of the body of Christ, there should be a, a, a light that should be burning. It shouldn't be somewhere like hid somewhere. All of a sudden, oh, I'm a son of God. And you're trying to show your light. But yet you're walking around here like this. You got a twist. You want to drop it like it's hot. Mm. You want to twist it with a twerk. Just saying. Some of you are being processed out of it. Some of you all know you should have been being processed out processed out of that mess you should have been processed out of that mess the great flood and I'm getting ready to finish up then the Lord said to Noah come into the ark you and all your household because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation that great day going to come this is my son I'm well pleased our daughter I'm well pleased then come find that rest Come into his presence and find that rest. Are you going to be found righteous? And I'm not talking about your filthy rag righteousness. I'm talking about the righteousness that where you started walking in Christ. That he seen the example that he was showing. God seen the example that he was showing through Christ, through you. That he didn't see you, he see Christ. He see a uh, 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 a, a resemblance of his glory upon you within you or is he going to see unrighteousness wickedness, evil what was supposed to take place when you think about a lot of things when he made male and female he had shut them up and you know about the flood, read it, about the flood some of you people out there in the world read about the flood, it's always been man, men and women all these generations and all of a sudden, things are trying to change. Why? That means some type of lie has come from somewhere. Some type of lie comes from somewhere. Someone has had a lust problem and decided to make what's called. You, you hear about certain things dealing with life where it talks about X chromosome and Y chromosomes. Where if men, males have more testosterone, testosterone level. God made us that way. And you have women estrogens if you want to use science. But you know, dealing with what's taking place, they're putting stuff in the foods. A lot of stuff is being placed in the foods. I'm just throwing this out there. And so, you know, dealing with it, it messing a lot of people's DNAs up. Be careful when you're having children nowadays. In these wicked days, generations that we are living in, that you're having children this day, and they're given this. And you really don't know what's in that. It could be estrogen. And you're wondering why, whatever, they're sending more whatever of estrogen there is in the male. And maybe in females that have been born, they know what's coded, what has codes on it, if you hear what I'm saying. And possibly giving it to 
females. And you have no idea, mom or dad, even with what the things that you're eating. As I said in my last video, what's old man thinking? So is he. But you are what you eat. <clears throat> but to dealing with Noah, he told them once they opened up the covenant, he told them to go and multiply. What they were supposed to do is to multiply. Male, female. That, that's the only way it can happen. He wanted the earth to multiply. If you really was to ask your question to a God that has created us, the unknown God, as many of you have said, how would something unknown tell you how to reproduce? It had to be him who formed you, made you the way you are, because his plan is to multiply. He, he made us in his image, not his likeness. He wanted us to do the same. Where will we ever think that a man can have a child with another man? Multiply. It will never happen. Where would you think a woman can have another child with another woman? Yes, if you adopt someone, but I'm talking about the nature, the true nature of male and female, man and woman. Or if you want to say two of his own kind, but of different natures, which is male and female. That's the only way you can multiply, subdue the earth. I'm moving on. Last but not least, something I shared that there was doctrines of men and teachers. I'm just, just having a conversation with some of you all. But um, if you look at chapter nine, I want to talk about dealing with things that you eat since we was talking about that topic you you remember there are certain doctrines that are being taught out there we know that there was a time and a place where God even dealt with Leviticus and talked about certain foods and people shouldn't eat whatever God why God did that some of us to this day we talk about certain things we're not going to eat that is of the devil Muslims have certain things that says is of the devil but if I was to come back and say once God killed everything at, out brought everything two by two in. And I'm not trying to give you, if it's a conviction for you, don't do it. Especially if the Lord has told you certain things not to eat. Because some people have certain things in their bloodline that brings forth sickness and some type of diseases. Some people have don't know how to eat in moderate. You got people who, who live to eat and they don't eat to live. Then you got people who have certain unclean spirits who are if you want to say greedy, they don't know how to eat in modesty or moderation, if you want to say. Uh, they, they, they are what they call that glutton. So you have to be very mindful what you eat and how you eat it. But God never put us to a place to say, oh, I'm not supposed to eat anything unclean. He had to correct Peter. Where Peter get that from? He had to be taught in the true Jewish traditions which was passed down from Moses' laws, which was connected to the, the Levitical priesthood. You have to do your own homework, but it's not even just homework. You have to sit and read between the lines and look at sometimes the old and see the difference to what's in the new, which was of the things maybe of the flesh and how God is trying to give you insight to things of the spirit. And Peter Came hungry, even just after prayer. He went in a trance. Probably was hungry, fasted, and God presented something. And he said, I do not eat these things because it's unclean. He said, why call the things that I made unclean that are clean? Well, when going to chapter 9, let's say God promises to Noah, Noah. But this was after the flood. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air and of, the, uh, of all that move on the earth and on all the fish of the sea. Now God is just saying, take back dominion. This is just, just take back dominion. He's purified everything. 
people done seen his mighty works or whatever not. But then, of course, we know people go right back to doing the very thing that their ancestors done. Because some people in certain generations, such as Noah, who was righteous before him, had to be birthed. People like me, people like many of you who are listening to me, you might have sons and daughters who's going to be raised in that generation, who's going to break those generational curses. Life, yeah, it might last 70 years, the earth, the world, people might change. Then when you die off or you leave, I shared this before, I don't want to be nobody king. I don't want somebody to fall in after me, lifting me up like a Saul or need somebody to rule over them. Because once I leave here, people are going to start making certain decisions. When some of y'all pastors leave, some of y'all going to act like a fool. If your mama and your daddy pass and leave here, you have made them gods and, and out of idolatry. Even your children, no matter how they might leave this place, many of you would change on God. And I'm talking about believers. We would change on God. And he's trying to establish dominion back to us as his people. The good life. Verse 3, chapter 9, verse 3. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And somebody, some scholar, some old head, if I was to say some old fool would come. It said you done took some things out of context and got people what's called. But it, it is written here. It says every moving thing that lives shall be, shall be food for you. I have given all things, even as the green herbs. But you shall not eat flesh with this life. So there's a difference how you cook and how you eat it. There's a different how you have to eat things. You can eat everything, but it, certain things you have to be very mindful how you eat them. You should not eat flesh with his life. That is, it's blood. Surely for your life blood, I will demand a reckoning. For the hand of every beast, I will require it. And from the hand of man, and from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. So this is where I would say sometimes you're going into these areas, you're reaping what you sow. If you take a life, your life is going to be taken. How they say you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Be very mindful how you do things because if, if you want to say then you might be judged a certain way accordingly, you might be judged much more for the beam in your eye versus the speck in somebody else's eye. How you present it. Be mindful on the things, how you go about doing things. Use wisdom. Last but not least, I would say I should have been finished, but I would talk about the rainbow probably at another time. But this was a promise that the Lord had made. That he said he would never flood the earth again. And he would establish his covenant. But he was talking to what he was talking to that was with Noah. Where he established this thing with Noah and he spoke this thing with Noah even to his descendants. But dealing with his descendants is all out of Noah's obedience, that, that obedience being passed down, not for someone to use the, the, the rainbow as a mockery, as a mockery to God, as if God had promised them. This is righteous. This is multiply. If he made a promise to you, then you should be multiplying. You should go and obey the commandments and be multiplying. According to how he has set things, because everything he has said, he called, he said it in order, male, female, man, woman, every beast of the field is named. It has its kind, those that are unclean and those that are clean. There's a promise, a covenant that he made with Noah and his descendants. It tells you sometimes out of one man's obedience. Many of you reaping the grace and the mercy and still reaping the promises. God does reign on the just as well as the unjust. 
you are reaping the promises of his word. But do not take any type of symbolic or any type of sign that is in the sky to use it for evil as if it was for you. It was for a righteous man, a covenant between God and a righteous man. I'm done. There's more I could say. And as I said, this is not to come against anyone. This hopefully will be an eye opener. Make someone, maybe even out in the world, maybe people who are of a different society, maybe those who are maybe form some type of church and put the name of God or the name of Lord Jesus Christ upon it. There's much more than just a name spelled on a church. There's much more than saying that you are saved. There's much more than saying you are a follower of Jesus Christ. There's much more because there's one and one only who has the last laugh, that has the last word, and there's only one who's going to get all the glory. And that's the one that has created all of heaven's and earth. I return. This is just something. It probably was a little lengthy. But it was just something I wanted to share with you. With inspired of the things that the Holy Spirit see me. I didn't want to go deep into it. But something to make you think. Certain things for you to see that you can point out. There could be backlash. I'm not worried about backlash. Accusations. These theologians or anything that's of darkness that might come. That you, cause I, maybe because there's a sun out here. As well as others out there who wants to just shine a little light on some dark spots. On some dark spots. You will not be able to put my light out. Because as I tell people. I shared this one time a few weeks back. In my home church. Many of us prioritize by taking our phone. We make it a priority. We make it a priority to make sure our phones are charged up. This is just like an analogy. I just shifted that way. That our phones, we make it a priority that our phones are charged up, that it function the way it needs to function. The reason why I say a lot of that dark stuff is not going to, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't bother me, because I prioritize my life. Not like a Pharisee, where I want people to see me praying and some new season, a new year come in and I announce it to the kingdom of the darkness that I'm fasting. I'm doing this type of fast. Some of us, we, we do, we share too much. And when the word tells us whatever you do in secret, he will reward you openly. But many of you, I wonder why you set your time. Once you finish your fast, 21 day fasts and some of you, your 40 days fasts, you're going to sit there and wonder why 2024 was probably the worst year just like you shared about 2023. I went through threes. I go through things. I'm not the, 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 the mightiest man there is. But I prioritize. I, par, I prioritize my life. I stay plugged and connected to Jesus. I stay connected to Jesus. I, you, I continue to walk with him. Talk with him. Meditate day and night. The enemy don't know what I'm meditating on. He don't know what I'm saying. I pray in tongues. He doesn't know my heavenly language. But the main thing is, where are your priorities? I prioritize to stay connected to the power source. To the one who's going to wake me up and start me on my day where I do have joy. Because I realize this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, be glad in it. As you hear me and my wife talk many times, we encourage one another up because she's, she stays plugged in. She stay plugged in. This is ain't nobody us lifting ourselves. We're just telling you certain things that we do. We're not the only ones. There's many stay in the presence of God. But we prioritize. He's first. We know that we cannot do nothing without him. We know that he calls us to triumph over all our situations. That it is him who's going to 
be our being and our moving. It is him that we are going to realize that he's going to make us more than conquerors. He lets us conquer certain things, but he takes us to a place that we realize when we wake up every day, whether we're in the valley, he's the God of the valleys. Whether if we're a little feeling a little bit on the mountaintop, that he's still the God on the mountain. We wake up knowing that he's writing a story. And he's rewriting it at times. And then when it boils down to us, when we wake up in the morning, we know that God is fighting for us. We know that we're on the winning team. We know who we are, as I said many times, who we belong to. Brothers and sisters, prioritize. Just like you do everything in life. But let everything, first thing, become first. Let first things be first. It's like I said, me and my wife, we, we, we tell each other, we talk to each other, we share with you all to find the beauty in the day. We looking for, if he woke us up, we looking for some type of sign. We know God is with us. But just because of our conversation, we look for that beauty. Something totally different that will put a smile on our face. That would still encourage us even more. That even give us strength that we feel like we can take down giants in the name of Jesus Christ. Hang on in there, those that are out there that truly love the Lord. They will take up their cross. They have no problems shining their light. Those that do, when they wake up, they know that the Lord knows that he's looking at them, that they are the apple as if I. Many of you need to know that the Lord is looking, seeking you. He's looking for the apple of his eye. He's looking for a certain aroma to be presented. Read that part in Noah where he made a sacrifice. It was a sweet aroma. When you went through the floods, and you raise the standard. That's a sweet aroma. But when the flood come in. Or any come in the flood. You don't raise the standard. There's a stench there. There was no sacrifice there. If you just want to get to that place. To prioritize yourself. As Paul even mentioned. I just use his illustration. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy, holy and acceptable to the Lord that it would be your reasonable servant but be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that good and accepted and perfect work that would be presented to the Lord present yourself to the Lord surrender and surrender all and when you hear his voice When you hear his voice, let his voice cover you versus the other lying voice trying to cover you. Ain't nothing like going out in the cold, putting on a pleather coat when you can have real leather. Something that lasts, something to protect. Jesus loves you all. Each and every last one of you. He showed you. If you're looking at this video, he has proved you. He loves you. And at that note, I'll talk to you soon. Have a blessed day and have a good night.